One of the most important new functionalities of the Mini 3 compared to the Mini 2 is the possibility to use the three intelligent flight modes grouped under the name Focus Track. I use them all the time as they enable very complex moves without mistakes. Out of the three modes, the one I prefer is Spotlight. In this video, I will show you why. There are two completely different ways of using spotlights, with static target and for tracking moving subjects. Let's start with the one I use the most. If we select a static landmark, the camera will maintain the target in the same position on the frame, regardless of the movement of the drone. In other words, using this method, the camera is not connected to the flight direction anymore. After drawing a box about the target, a small window appears with the three focus track modes. The default mode is Spotlight, so we are immediately ready to go. Spotlight can be used with both color modes of the Mini 3, normal and decent alike. Excellent! It is also possible to use the wheel of the remote controller to apply a smooth zoom up to 200% while using Spotlight for very interesting effects. But being a digital zoom, there is a loss of resolution, so it is interesting only when the project will be encoded in 1080p. Sadly, Focus Track is only available at frame rates up to 30 frames per second. It would have been nice to be able to use it at 60 to apply some slow motion. It is possible to set targets very far away, in this case the tip of Mount Etna, which is about 30 km away. Drone technology has been moving at an incredible pace in the last couple of years. I still remember when with previous models, to select a target we have to fly on top of it, point the camera down, click on a button, then come back and shoot the footage. Ancient history. A classic way to use Spotlight is to fly diagonally to the target to reveal the background with some parallax effect. In this case revealing Mount Etna behind the monastery on the foreground. Here I'm using it to show the width of this lovely bay in East Sicily, with the camera locked on the normal castle, while the drone performs all sorts of moves. Another bay nearby, this time with the camera locked on a tiny lighthouse, revealing Mount Etna in the background. In this case, I'm raising in altitude while moving towards this village perched on the hills. Spotlight maintains the camera on the target, despite the change in elevation. Spotlight is also extremely useful in real estate videography to show the surrounding of property in a cinematic way. A classic move very hard to perform manually is the famous grain shot. The aircraft starts at a low altitude with the target locked in the middle of the frame. Then we raise in elevation, moving closer to the target and finally on top of it, for a bird's eye view. It is obviously possible to do the exact opposite for a reverse crane, revealing the background. I suggest choosing Cine mode for lower speed and more precise results. Waypoints was a very popular tool in the Mavic 2 Pro, sadly it hasn't been available in recent models. The idea was to set two or more points. The software stores for each point the position of the aircraft, the elevation and the orientation of the camera. It then handles the smooth transition between the points. Using Spotlight, we can get very similar results, as we have control of all the movement of the aircraft while the target remains in the center of the frame.
Selecting a moving subject by drawing a box around it can be challenging. In these situations, it is better to use subject scanning. We enable this option in the control tab of the setting. When it is selected, the interface will put a box over suitable targets like people, bikes, cars and boats. All we need to do to select the target is tap on the plus sign. In Focus Track there are two tools particularly suited for tracking subjects. Active Track is designed to track a target autonomously. The drone will move to maintain a constant distance. This mode can be used without touching the controller. It is therefore the only one to use when we are unable to operate the aircraft, mostly in follow me situations. Anytime I can use the controller for tracking subject other than myself, my favorite mode is Spotlight. In this mode the target will remain in the same position in the frame, while we perform all sorts of moves with the sticks of the controllers, for very dynamic tracking. If we target a moving object in spotlight with the drone hovering in a static position, it will behave uh, like, uh, well, like a spotlight. This is useful for following subject moving in a confined space, like a boxer on a ring or a rock star on stage. But in most cases Spotlight is used for maintaining a target in the middle of the frame while performing all sorts of moves. We can get closer or farther away, modify the altitude, get in front of it or to the side or behind. It is the ideal tool for tracking sport and all sorts of action when an operator is controlling the drone. The ability to tilt the gimbal by 90 degrees to shoot video and photos in portrait mode is a huge selling point of the Mini 3. It is the only model of the current DJI line able to go vertical and this is huge for users with a social media strategy. I find vertical drone photography very interesting for creative shots, but I'm less keen on vertical footage. For me, real video is strictly in a landscapes format. But I can see the huge potential for users who have a digital marketing strategy based on platforms like Instagram, TikTok or YouTube Shorts. After the latest firmware upgrade, the three modes of Focus Track are available in vertical format. All is needed is to tilt the camera to vertical before selecting the target and then proceed as usual. You can watch my video about Attic Track by clicking on this link. I will add a link to my video about the other intelligent flight mode of the Mini 3, point of interest, as soon as I will publish it. Don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video interesting. Thank you.